to discuss about the microscopical and the powder microscopical study of crude drugs different types of crude drugs how we can go for the microscopical in the sense transverse section or longitudinal section the histological characters of the drug internal cells arrangement or in the powder microscopical means when the crude drug it is in powder form what are the cell constituents it will have that will be the characteristic feature of that particular drug so how we are going to study the crude drugs in microscopical study right so that is there when it comes to the microscopic evaluation microscopic evaluation is indispensable in the initial identification of herbs as well as in identifying small fragments of crude or powdered herbs and in the detection of adulteration also the different types of adulterant like insect uh, animal fecus mold fungi all those things uh, they will be there as well as identifying the plant by characteristic tissue features right so microscopical study it is necessary because it may have different types of adult trends the mixed uh, similar looking substances or uh, similarity in color similarity in morphology so many things right so that's what we have to trace out to increase the uh, quality or to remove the adult trend every plant possesses a characteristic tissue structure which can be demonstrated through a study of tissue arrangement cell walls and configuration when properly mounted in stains reagents and media whenever we are cutting the transverse section we need to add the certain reagents right so that we can uh, make the color of those particular cells or tissues which is there inside the plant and that will be the identity of that particular plant material lignin stain red or pink with drop of fluoroglucinol and concentrated hydrochloric acids right mm -hmm. so the fluoroglucinol and hcl 1 is to 1 ratio we are using to stain the lignins mucilage is stained pink with ruthenium red and n by 50 iodine or uh, iodine solution can stain the starch grains or starch present and hemicellulose blue right so these are the role of reagent also which will uh, 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 trace the uh, which will be helping to trace the different types of cells and the tissues when it comes to the powdered microscopy as the name indicate powdered microscopy the drug it is there in the powder form powdered crude drugs microscopy of crude drug investigate various microscopic techniques used in the examination of structural and cellular features in order to determine their botanical origin right these methods are useful in identifying species with similar morphological characters for example uh, raulfia root is there and uh, ashwagandha root is there cinchona bark cinnamon bark right so likewise when the similar morphological characters there you will not be able to identify the drug by their morphological characters because they are same that at that time you need to go with the powdered microscopy in the drug you have to make it into the powder form and that uh, you will put into the slide and you will observe under microscope so and inside the histological uh, features the cells present in that particular powder it will be different so you will be able to identify ki this powder or this drug is so and so today there are variety of methods available to authenticate herbal drugs ranging from the simple morphological examination to physical and chemical analysis and also dna molecular biology right due to the cost because these techniques are costly powder microscopy is the most practical method for primary authentication because here you need only pestle and mortar you, you can crush them and make how you are doing in your kitchen to making the masalas right like that you can make it into the powder form or you can use the mixer or grinders then that powder you can put into the slide and you can observe in microscope right so likewise if you do so uh, it will be easy and uh, uh, not 
that powder microscopy whenever we are uh, going for observation under microscope we are going to observe different cells right so in uh, here the first one i explained that ergastic contains cell contains what are these the cell contains with which we are concerned in pharmacognosy are those which can be identified in vegetable drug by microscopical examination or by the chemical or physical test right so whatever the drug uh, we are going to study it will be having certain types of cell content that represent either food storage products or by products of metabolism that's for nothing but primary metabolism and the secondary metabolism and includes uh, the different example like carbohydrate protein fixed oils and fats alkaloids purines glycosides volatile oils gums and mucilages resins tannins calcium oxalate crystals calcium carbonates and the silica these are non living and they referred as a gastric substance right gastric substance here uh, ergastic substance sorry ergastic e r g a s t i c ergastic right ergastic substance are non protoplasm materials found in the cells right and they may appear in protoplasm also in vacuoles or in the cell wall also right that uh, we have discussed in the cell wall constituents and the cell inclusions so the next one calcium oxalate crystal that's what uh, oxalic acid rarely occur into the free state of plant but is extremely common as a calcium salt in the form of crystals right so here you can see how it is forming in the protein protein metabolism or in other metabolism the oxalic acid will form which is harmful to the plant right with the uh, up, obtained from the soil they are obtaining the plants obtaining the calcium ions from the soils as a nutrient and uh, uh, they they are trying to remove this oxalic acid to remove harmful effect this harmful effect they will become a calcium oxalate crystal which is the harmless uh, with the oxalic acid and calcium you can you can see the formation of crystals oxalic acid plus calcium ion calcium oxalate right which will be deposited in the different tissues in different forms these are harmless to the plant and doesn't take any uh, doesn't take part in metabolism hence it is called excretory product it will not be having any role in the metabolism process so calcium oxalate crystals are usually present uh, about 1% and somewhere it will be exceeding uh, 20% right so coming to the next one general form and size of the crystals so you can see the different size like uh, uh, here you can see prism prism common form right so it is you can see that kind of uh, crystals in the senna hyoscyamus plant quassia wood licorice root cascara bark like rolfia root and uh, this thing and the rosettes uh, like that kind of crystals you will get in the rhubarb stromonium cascara senna clove and uh, jalap single acicular acicular crystals that will be there in the gentian root and the cinnamon bark right then bundle or acicular crystals they will be there in the squills morpho uh, the micro spheroidals or sandy crystals it will be in the belladonna leaves plant cascara shows the cluster crystals generally distributed in the ground mass of parenchyma and the prism right so here you can see calcium oxalate crystals a like so uh, the it is the tetragonal system you can see here the tetragonal right uh, and uh, coming to the e crystal of monoclinic system uh, then uh, different types of shape you can see here uh, like uh, tetragonal single the rectangle right uh, different uh, single needles right single needles will be there huh? hexagonal also it is there so different uh, types of uh, crystals it will be indicating here also you can see right in the uh, in b image you can see how it is like a hexagonal like a benzene in one side you can see and uh, that that will be that uh, length of this uh, uh, position meta position and para position it is going to reduce then rectangle shape right so these different types of uh, the crystals of the calcium which is formed by with the reaction with calcium and oxalic acid so uh, it will be the identity that which kinds of which shape of the crystal it is present in which plant 
so you will be having the reference monograph so you can find out uh, find it out easily that ha huh, this particular plant powder or senna powder it is having uh, hexagonal shape of the calcium oxalate crystal so definitely it is senna leaf only like that then uh, how you are going to detect with the chemical test the sections chloral hydrate and caustic alkali to clear the sections section you have to cut right and uh, this section acetic acid and caustic alkali any one of right you have to add in which is insoluble calcium oxalate crystals which is right the calcium oxalate crystals and hydrochloric acid soluble here it was with acetic acid it is insoluble with hydrochloric acid soluble and the crystal uh, 50% of sulfuric acid if you will add needle like crystal of calcium sulfate you are going to get so these types of reaction it will indicate you the what is the type of crystals are there whether it they are there or not right so likewise the uh, these reagents are having significant role so significance they give the protection wow, this is the significance of calcium oxalate so that also you should know why they are there in the plants the, they gives the protection to the plant against the birds and the animals they have a great diagnostic value and the presence and absence of the crystals type of crystal dimensions are useful in the correct identification of crude drugs for the scientist or for the pharmacognosist it helps to detection of adult trends yes of course because when we are going for microscopic study we will come to know that what is the type of uh, because we will be having the specific shape direction the what kind of shape the calcium oxide crystal will be having and the other fakers moles uh, earthy matter and sand particles will be having so we can differentiate so that's what they are helping so they had the different examples you can see that cinnamon and cassia bark right tubular calcium oxide crystals are present in the cells of medullary rays while they are not found in the medullary rays in the cellon cinnamon bark here uh, two types of uh, right java cinnamon and uh, cellon cinnamon bark so in java cinnamon bark uh, the the tubular calcium oxalate crystals where as they are not found in the medullary rays of cellon cinnamon bark so cinnamon bark so only it is there but different species or different types of cinnamon bark they may contain they may not contain so when you will go for the powder characteristic or uh, uh, you will go for the microscopic study you will easily uh, able to differentiate that this is the java cinnamon or cellon cinnamon bark right like that here another example clove stall contain uh, the different types of calcium oxalate prism but clove flower buds does not right so like uh, jamaica quassia prism are present in parenchyma whereas the suriname quassia will are uh, they are not found so here in two, two types of quassia it will be there it will not be there so it is also helping into the differentiation of the what do you call uh, species and types you can see here the in uh, belladonna the microspoidal types of in hyoscyamus prism and square type stromonium it will be cluster types of the crystals present right so these are the very much uh, helpful it often form a character of considerable diagnostic importance the solanaceae leaves may be distinguished from one another belladonna by its sandy crystals stromonium by its cluster crystals hanbane by its single and twin types of prism similarly other plants leaves and roots which both possesses acular crystals so belladonna leaves and roots which have sandy crystals so all the uh, plants they will be having their specific types of crystal which is going to be their identity and which is going to be helpful for the identification of that plant material when it comes to the powder form another important constituents which will be there which we can trace it out by the ts and by the powder characteristic that is the starch grain the starch grains constituents the principal from the carbohydrate the reserve in the green plant and is to be found especially in seeds and underground organs like acacia tragacan even uh, underground means uh, like potato is very good source of starch right starch occur in the form of granules 
that is starch grains and the shape and size which is characteristic of the species as it so also the ratio of the content of the principal constituents amylose and amylopectin so these are the constituents are the of the carbohydrate right the number of starch are recognized in pharmaceutical use they include some maize right rice wheat potato these are the source of starch so different types of starch it is available here also you can see the uh, in this product gramnia family the these are oraiza sativa dal the re wheat by right so these are oats uh, barley uh, shaga ginger also will be having starch uh, bean flour also having starch uh, sweet potato potato so these are the uh, different examples of the plant name and of their family and uh, the common name which will be having commercial starch which will be uh, being marketed occurrence in the plant starch occurs uh, in granules and varying size in almost all organ of the plant it found most abundantly in root rhizome fruits and seeds right in large grains uh, right the small granules formed in the chloroplast by the condensation of the sugar and uh, afterwards hydrolyzed into the sugar and uh, may pass in solution to store organ so like that it is uh, there are uh, you can see the starch different colors or different shape right irregular angular mass right orderless mucilaginous these are the characteristic of the starch okay so coming to here uh, you can see that size how it is going to be if it is rice starch the same 2 to 12 micron in diameter and 12 to 30 micron like that wheat starch are having different and their shape also right uh, uh, if you you will take the wheat starch the shape is going to the uh, circular oval in shaped uh, like granules contain helium at the center at the uh, concentric faintly marked uh, strenuous rarely compound granules 2 to 5 component and also observed so 5 to 50 micron diameter maize starch uh, it will be having rounded shape and the 5 to 31 micron potato starch uh, simple granules but sub spherical somewhat flattened irregular white in shape and the 30 to 100 micron so likewise you can see here the different types of starch how it looks like right so these uh, potato starch will be like this uh, in this you can see here potato written in rice starch it will be somewhere it will be in group together somewhere it will be in two two pair in three pair in wheat starch it is going to be different and maize also somewhat uh, the corners you can see here in the starch it is not spherical or oval right so uh, even though if it is starch uh, if the source are different the shape and the, the uh, presence also it is going to be different right here also you can see so these are the identity these are going to be the marker or reference for you ki that uh, uh, in which this particular uh, uh, starch uh, particular wheat or rice or potato it will be having like this here also you can see size in different uh, small medium large uh, right so these are the reference which you can take right chemical constituents uh, already i told you amylose in starch amylose amylopectin these are the amylose is water soluble amylose gives a blue color with iodine so these are the identification test if you will boil the starch with 15 ml water translucent viscous jelly it will form and that jelly with iodine deep blue color it will gone after the blue color will disappear uh, if you will warm and cool so these are the identity uh, which you can do it starts uh, everybody knows that it is need to demulcent protective absorbent preparation in the, the dusting talcum powder distin disintegrating agent diluent diagnostic aids uh, right so base of the suppository different pharmaceutical uses it is having so that's what uh, when we are going for a, a microscopical study we should able to identify next one is the alio uh, aluron grain right these aluron grains are also the reserve food found in seeds uh, the most characteristic are protein reserve which may be present into the amorphous mass completely filling the cells in the endosperm of cardamom and uh, may take the form of definite grains names like aluron grain seeds are only uh, seeds are the only plant members in which aluron grains occurs hence 
a powder containing these grains may be known to have derived from the seeds okay so ailerons may be the uh, segregated uh, in particular tissue or the part of tissue or it may be distributed through all the tissue in association with the other reserves ailerons gains are very much in uh, in size shape and complexity uh, their characteristic in particular sheets the seeds of the particular family is right so these are the thing so how we are going to observe this uh, ailerons grains uh, in if you see the uh, ke uh, chemical test uh, myelin test stains the proteins red on warming or iodine solution stains the uh, ground substance and the uh, crystalloids yellow yellow is brown but leaves are globoids unstained picric acid stains the ground substance and the uh, crystalloids yellow so these are the identification test so coming to the here my when we are observing under microscopy what the things we are going to observe oleogranes showing the crystalloids and uh, globoid from the endosperm of seeds of the resinous cuminis it is one of the example like castor seeds castor seeds oleogranes because we have discussed that it is available in the seeds so it will be look like this the shape and size you can see here right so uh, around 6 uh, uh, junction it will be like uh, uh, looking like uh, um paramecium or uh, like uh, cell structure plant cells like that the next one is the <coughs> ideoblast ideoblast are the cell which differ markedly from the ordinary cells of the tissue in either form size or content such cells are often present in the mesophyll of leaves like in tea you can see here or in the hamamlis here also right so these cells containing calcium oxalates may differ from those surroundings them in size form or contents right so this also one of the markers you can see here also in the belladonna leaf here the they have given that idoblast right or in the one find large rounded idoblast and uh, fitted with the microspondyl crystals of calcium oxalate right in the some uh, in some leaves such as stromonium and hanbane here uh, they have given different example actually it is uh, not visible right uh, this one is for belladonna this one is for datura stromonium that so uh, and hanbane idoblast containing calcium oxalate crystals are arranged in a single layer immediately below palisade palisade cells will be there no these are the palisade cells so below this uh, it will be there and uh, constituent crystal layer in the mesophylls here it will be clear in you can see the here this is the bark uh, the stem one of the this cork uh, cork cambium it is periderm living fellow phloem right so this up to this it is bark vascular cambium this uh, green color it is called a cambium which will be the dividing part of the bark and the wood then sap wood and the hard wood so this will be soft one and this will be hard one so this is a complete uh, structure uh, <coughs> 